What is going on YouTube? Eric here, Mr. Fired Up Wealth. ARK Innovation ETFs. You either love them or you hate them. What's going on with ARK? Is it gonna go higher? Is it going lower? What should you believe? I've got a lot of opinions. I've been investing for over 20 years. I've been invested in ARK for several years, well before you, many of you probably have even heard of ARK funds. And I think I have a really good understanding of what ARK Innovation ETFs are all about, what they're trying to accomplish, and maybe where they're headed over the next five or 10 years. Now, today's video is gonna be focused on ARKK. Of course, ARK ETFs has several other ETFs that are actively managed. The ARKK essentially takes the best of breed from autonomous, from the new internet, from genomics, from all the different secular growth trends that Kathy Wood and ARK ETFs see as good long-term growth prospects. I'm gonna provide you some opinions as to why I think there's so much hate in the market against Kathy Wood and ARK. There's some really compelling reasons why if you just actually hear it and think about it, it might make sense to you. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, guys, let's take a look at ARC, look at what they're all about, the holdings. Some of you probably know what they're all about, but I'm gonna go through some of the holdings and talk through them, the ones I like, the ones maybe I don't know a lot about. They're actually gonna be creating a short or bearish ETF that's actually, I think the ticker is SARK, that's gonna be shorting against, basically betting against ARC success. There's a lot of investors that got into this at the top too, and I'll talk more about later in the video why I think there's so much hatred in the market for ARC funds. So why ARC Invest? So it's basically focused on disruptive technology and innovation, and this is taking, like I mentioned earlier, some of the best secular growth trends that we're going to see over the next five, 10 years. So you're thinking of genomics, you're thinking of fintech, you're thinking of next generation ETF, autonomous, all those different things. Now, a lot of people will, will make claims like ARC is only successful because they got lucky with Tesla and so on. You know, ARC has done well because of Tesla, but there are a lot of stocks that they've, they've picked that have done very well and they've outperformed the market and the S&P 500, even the NASDAQ over a three and five year period. Now this year, they're not performing as well because they outperformed significantly in 2020. So a lot of people ended up chasing. We'll get to that later. Okay, so if you're a growth investor, you might track something like the NASDAQ, the QQQ, the triple Q. So let's do a comparison of ARKK and the triple Qs. You can see ARK, the ARKK is a 0.75% expense ratio. Now, the reason for that is it's actively managed. And that's one thing that I wanna talk about in this video. A lot of people will look at ARK when they do a buy or a sell, and they'll try to make investing decisions with their portfolio off of what ARK is doing. So I see people all the time, they take these moves. You know, ARK every night will send an email and it'll, it'll tell you what they bought or sold that day. And people will be like, oh no, they sold, sold some Tesla or they sold some of this or that. They're actively managed. So they're trying to outperform the market. And what they'll do is they'll shave when things are running a little bit hot, they'll buy them back lower. Now, sometimes they do, the story changes or they change their mind and they do get rid of a stock. That happens. But a lot of times, most of the time, it's just active management. Buying a couple of shares here, selling a couple shares there. You're paying for that active management through that expense ratio, which is 0.75%. The QQQ is a 0.20% expense ratio, but it's a static index. It's not actively managed. Now that is rebalanced all the time. It's the NASDAQ 100. So that's another thing people mis misunderstand. The NASDAQ, the QQQ is not all the NASDAQ. It's the top 100 companies by market cap and it changes all the time. So that's the nice thing about those ETFs, even, even a static ETF, it still is moving stocks in and out. Even the S&P 500, like the VU or the SPY. And that's exactly why ETFs, even if it's a static index like the VU, you know, the S&P 500, why they can be powerful as like core foundations for a portfolio, especially if you're young and you're a long-term investor, because it basically does some of the work for you. If a company's doing well, it get, it'll get moved into the S&P 500. If it's doing poorly, it might get kicked out and so on. If you look at this though, you've got, so shares outstanding, look at look at the AUM, assets under ma management. So assets under management for ARC, 22.7 billion versus the QQQ, 183 billion. So of course, there's a lot more liquidity, a lot more people trading shares. You know, you've got 503 million shares for QQQ. 188 million shares for ARKK. More people interested in a broader index like a QQQ. So holdings, ARKK has 47 holdings. The Qs have 103 holdings. Look at how much different it is. You've got your mega cap tech stocks, you know, your Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Facebook, Tesla. The only thing that's really common is gonna be Tesla. Tesla is 3.9% of the Qs. It's 10.75% of ARKK. You know, and the QQQ is, is a great ETF. I actually own that in retirement as well. I, I own a combination 
combination of the Qs and some ARCs in there. But you can see the major difference here between the assets in each ETF. The Qs are gonna be much more established companies, much larger cap. ARC is going for the home run ball. They're trying to hit home runs on every single stock that's in that basket. Now, when you look at returns, let's look at longer terms because I'm more of a long-term investor. Now, of course, you know, one risk to ARC is going to be, you know, there's short sellers out there. We're going to talk more about that later. But you think of like interest rates, interest rates start going up. These type of names, these higher risk, higher PE, higher multiple type stocks, these more speculative growth assets, these high flyers, they're going to get hit the most. But let's just look at, so one year return. So if you look at ARC, one year return, 48.75%. The triple Qs, 36.63%. Three-year return, ARKK, 177% versus the triple Qs at 108.6%. So you look at this and say, if you're a new investor and you get in the market and you're chasing it at the top, you're looking at like, oh, ARK is terrible. They're, you know, they're, they're underperforming, they're, they're trash, they're going to zero. What happened, guys? ARK ran hard in 2020. It outperformed the Qs and the Qs had a monster year. And that's the thing too, if you're a new investor, your expectations might be completely distorted of what reality is. You're not gonna get 30, 40, 50% returns every year if everybody be you know billionaires and trillionaires. The pandemic changed the game, the amount of stimulus pumped in the economy, and it is a risk longer term because at some point that's gonna slow down. The question is always when. But when you look at this guys, 177% return in three years versus 108%. So if you're a long-term investor and you've been in ARC funds, you're very, very happy. If you just started and you chased the top, you're not so happy. So these percentages, guys, are annual percentages. And if you look at since inception, so since ARK ETF ARKK was created, it's performed 34.27% on average every year. So here's the top 10 holdings. We're going to look through this, but I'm also going to open it up and look at all of the holdings. So Tesla is the highest weight. 10.76% of ARKK is Tesla. Teladoc, 5.7%. So you can see already, there's some people that hate stocks like Tesla or Teladoc, and you can see why there's negative sentiment. Roku, okay, 5.42%. Zoom, you either love these type of stocks or you don't. What's surprising to me though, is I'll see on you know Twitter, or I'll see on different message boards, people that are basically hating against Kathy Wood and ARK, but then they own a lot of the stocks in the ETF. So I, I think that's kind of interesting, but Square, 4.82%. Shopify is 4.5%. Coinbase, a lot of people don't like Coinbase too. So there goes another one. They added some shares of Robinhood. So that's kind of a love-hate deal, right? Unity Software is 4%. Twilio, there's a lot of fired up wealth favorites on here. So I own some Tesla. I bought it before it ripped, you know, last year in 2020. I own Teladoc. I own Zoom Video. I own Square. I own Shopify, Unity Software, Twilio, I mean, pretty much all of them on the list, I actually own in my own portfolio. And I manage a multi-million dollar portfolio, guys. I've been doing this for 20 years, so I understand the risks investing in growth like this, but I also understand the rewards. And I invest in high quality companies that I have conviction in, but I generally buy lots of different stocks, right? I'm not just buying five stocks. I like to have a bunch of different stocks with small percentage allocation. Now that might not work for you, and that's okay if it doesn't, but my methodology, the closest thing that really follows what I do with my portfolio is something like an arc. So I feel like I understand it. Either you love it or you hate it. Okay, so we covered the top 10 previously. Now we're gonna go through some other ones. So you can see Zillow Group is number 11. On the far right, you can see the percentages. And I really do something similar in my own portfolio, guys. I mean, I have lots of positions that are two, three, percent of the portfolio percentage of assets. And then I've got tons that are 1% and even less. And I do that to hedge risk. So I don't have as much conviction in some of those stocks, but I do see potential upside. And so I hedge it by having numerous stocks in my portfolio. Again, you're either going to agree with that or you're not going to agree with it. Okay. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. I'm just kind of explaining to you what ARC is all about. And maybe it'll help you understand what they're trying to accomplish. That's what I'm trying to do with this video here. So you look at Zillow Group, Exact Sciences. So I own Zillow. You know, I do own several of the ARC ETFs, including ARC G. Most of those are in retirement. I like to keep ETFs in retirement. And then I have an individual taxable brokerage that has a little over $1.6 million that I manage. That's just individual stocks. There's a couple of ETFs in there, but mostly individual stocks in the taxable brokerage. UiPath, one of my favorites. There's Twitter in there, DocuSign. I own DocuSign Palantir. Brought that to YouTube first. You know, DraftKings, own that one. It's on my top 25 conviction. A lot of these stocks in here 
are on my top 25 high conviction stock list. If you're interested in that list, check out Fired Up Wealth Patreon. You can actually join and get a list. There's a video, a 30 minute video that breaks down actually 29 holdings. It's top 25 and four bonus picks as well as granular rankings for each. So things like safety score, moat management, things like that. And I talk through each stock in the video and also provide a list there on Patreon. So you can check that out. You know, C Limited, that's a Fired Up Wealth favorite. We have lots of Singapore members. Hello everybody in Singapore, you know, you can see on your, you know, I'm not going to read through all of them, but you know, pager duty, twist biosciences. There's a lot of stocks I own in here. There's skills. A lot of people like that one, Trimble, Nintendo, you know, Proto Labs and so on. You can see on your screen, there's a lot of high quality speculative growth type names, you know, so some people might not have the risk appetite for some of these stocks, but these secular growth trends without question have a ton of total addressable market or TAM in front of them. Okay, guys, next, the moment you've probably been waiting for, I'm going to give you some thoughts and I'll probably ruffle a few feathers. That's okay. I'm going to give you my thoughts and opinions on why there's so much hatred in ARK ETFs. After I do that, I'm actually going to show some technical analysis. So definitely stay tuned for that. I'm going to show you where I think the price might go with the stock. So when you think about ARK, I've kind of covered this along the way. So hopefully you've watched the whole video. If not, I encourage you to do so. There's lots of good nuggets of information in this video the entire way through. But when you think about a lot of the new investors that came in in 2020, a lot of them came in in late 2020, a lot of them came in early 2021, the market was running really, really hot. It had already gone up a lot. People were chasing beginning of the year, new president, all this different stuff, vaccine. There's, there's all this, this news, this positive bullish sentiment and news. So people start chasing a lot of these growth stocks. They're new to the market. They just assume that everything goes up every day, that it st you know, stocks only go up. And they buy this at the top and they get trapped. And that's exactly what happened to a lot of investors. A lot of the sentiment that you see, the negative sentiment, are from people that basically chased at the top and they're now bag holding and they want to blame somebody else. If you follow the Masterclass series, I've got a Masterclass series on Patreon. You can subscribe to that. Check out Patreon. There's 12 plus hours of content. I talk, there's one of the videos in there I talk about psychology and discipline. And it really comes back to that psychology. There's a thing called overconfidence effect. So some investors don't want to buy ETFs because they have it in their brain convinced that they can do better. I think that you can do a balance. I, I like having a little bit of ETFs and some individual stocks because I can get safer stocks. And that 25 conviction stock list kind of paints a picture of what I mean by that. Because I might add like a John Deere, which seems really boring but it's a blue chip and it gives me st stability or, you know, something like a Lockheed Martin. It's not going to give me a ton of growth. The growth score is low, but it's going to give me a little bit of stability, a little bit of a core, you know, things like Amazon. Why do I buy Amazon? I don't buy it as a hyper growth stock. I buy it because it's high conviction and I know my money is what I, what I consider safe in the stock. And that's why I like to have a blend of, of different pillars, individual stocks. And if this interests you, I have an entire series on the channel that talks about growth stocks, how I build growth portfolios, how I break down each pillar and so on. If you aren't new to the community, you already know about this stuff. And hopefully this video might help paint a picture of why I like to invest the way that I invest. I've been doing it for a long time and it's what works for me. You have to do what's best for you. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about with ARK is a lot of short sellers actually targeted those funds, okay? So the meme stocks, a lot of people, that were that started chasing meme stocks and some of the cryptocurrency when they first started investing maybe in late 2020 or even early 2021 they were buying arc because it you know it had a stellar year everybody was saying buy arc and it was just it was a lot of fomo a lot of, of chasing a lot of fired up wealth rules that have been broken i have top 15 investing rules when, when you think of arc if you already invested in arc and you're up a lot it goes you know it pulls back you're, you're still up nicely plus you're thinking long term ARC is thinking about CAGR, compound annual growth rates, and they're looking at five-year price targets. If you're new to the market, if you're a young investor, you're chasing those shiny objects, those Lambos. You want the stock to go up every day. And when it doesn't do that, you want somebody to blame. So that psychology goes back to that. You know, if, if, if you, get, you go on YouTube and you listen to a YouTuber and they give you, you know, 10 stocks and you go buy 10 of them, and nine of them are right and one's wrong. You're not going to give any credit to the nine that were right. You're only going to remember the one that was wrong. You're going to take full credit for the stock picks. Yeah, I, I bought that, you know, even though you might have got the idea somewhere else. That's just human nature, guys. So with ARC, it's a scapegoat. A lot of the people that, you know, 
bought ARK at the top. They want a scapegoat. They want somebody to blame. The other thing, you know, if you're a value investor, I totally get it. You might not believe in or understand how to evaluate these companies. And if you're an old school, traditional value investor, you're never going to be convinced that you should be paying, you know, 500 PE or 28 X, you know, sales. It's just not going to happen. And that's okay too. Every investor has their own risk tolerance, suitability, goals, et cetera. So I'm not here to convince you that you should buy ARC if you don't believe in it, if you don't have conviction. For investing for me is all about conviction. Now, the other thing that happened at the same time as all this is you had interest rates starting to go up plus inflation fears. Anytime you have interest rates or inflation, high flyer growth names, they're going to get hit the hardest. So you had a combination of people buying way at elevated rates, buying way above moving averages, way above trend lines. It was just parabolic on a lot of the stocks and even like the ARK ETFs. It just looked way elevated. People are buying at the top. Then all of a sudden you get interest rate fears, you know, inflation fears. Everybody starts selling growth stocks. The sentiment gets bad. It snowballs. Everything goes in Wall Street. Everything goes to the upside, over-exaggerated, and the downside, over-exaggerated. So when the market's running hot, it's hotter than it probably should be. And when the sentiment's down, the market's going down, it goes lower than you think it ever will. Look at March of 2020. Most people never thought it was going to get as low as it did. But then there was other people that you know, thought it could go much lower. But it's really hard to know when the sentiment goes bullish or bearish how far it'll go. And it's usually over-exaggerated. These hedge funds were targeting this. All this stuff kind of combined. You now have uh, an ETF that's going to be coming out that's going to be bearish and shorting ARC. You still have a lot of negative sentiment. You've got a lot of put buyers in ARC. It's just one of those things where it had a lot of negative sentiment. It's going to continue to do that, especially with the interest rate and inflation fears. Next, I'm going to show you a chart, show you some technicals of where I think ARKK might go next. Okay, guys, next I'm going to look at the technicals. I'm going to show you the setup where the stock or the ETF price might go from here. Please, if you have not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. Click the little bell to get notifications. We're just getting started here. I do two videos every week. I launch them on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Also, please hit the like button, drop a comment. Helps out the algo, and I do appreciate the support very, very much. So I sent this out to the Discord community on the 2nd of August, and I said that this is a potential setup that we might see here. Now, with anything technical analysis related, there's never a guarantee. So there's no guarantee that this is actually going to happen. But there are two patterns that I've had a lot of success with over my 20 years of investing and trading, and this is one of them, bull flag being the other. So I'm going to show you what this pattern is, what we're in, and what the potential price targets could be. Okay, guys, so we're in a bullish continuation diamond. And there's actually that the blue lines are a wedge. So there's actually a couple different chart patterns that we're following here. Now it's not 100% guaranteed that it's going to break out, but it looks like it already is. On the 2nd of August, it was towards the middle of those two yellow lines. Now it could certainly reject that, that top line and it could go lower. Also any kind of fundamental news, if there's any kind of taper tantrum, any you know fundamental risk, you know whatever, if the market falls apart, this thing's going to get hit really hard. Interest rates, things like that. So keep that in mind. But assuming that the overall market stays bullish. I will say this, August is historically a terrible month, so keep that in mind. But assuming everything stays bullish, this is set up really well. Now this pattern generally takes about 90 days to set up. So you'd be looking at probably this fall, like September, October, maybe even November, sometime later in 2021, here's the price targets that you could see if it continues to the bullish side. There are a lot of put buyers, they're coming out with this new short, ARK ETF. So tread, you know, tread lightly. I'm not a financial advisor. I can't tell you what to buy or sell, but here are the price targets that we could see. So assuming it does break out of this bullish continuation diamond, you could see it go as high as $152, maybe even $160. Now, the previous all-time high was $159.70. You're going to get a lot of resistance there, which is that why that 160 number is there. If it were to break 160, it always could do a Fibonacci extension and go a little higher, you know, quite a bit higher even. But I'd be looking if it does if it does break out, you're probably going to see like 130, 140, 152 is probably where it would get sometime in late 2021, assuming that the market stays bullish and it stays intact. I appreciate your time and attention, guys. Please do like, comment, subscribe. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.